In this video we're going to start the analysis of a circuit called an emitter coupled pair and in particular we're going to start with large signal analysis. This circuit is super interesting because it is sensitive to the differential mode of uh, differential signals and it doesn't care about DC shifts in the common mode. I've put a picture of the, emitter, of the emitter coupled pair on the left here. It consists of two transistors that have their emitters stuck together uh, and the emitter node is then put through a tail current source down here. Um, so the name's pretty descriptive. The emitters are coupled together. Um, I've put a resistor in, seri in parallel with this tail current source because no current source is perfect, so this R tail is just representing the output impedance of the current source, um, and it's usually quite high. The node uh, connected to the tail current source between the two, where the two emitters are coupled, is often called the tail node. Um, this particular emitter coupled pair is loaded with resistors, um, though you can attach other things on top of QP and QN, and we'll see some examples next lecture. The inputs and outputs of the emitter coupled pair are a little bit complicated. Um, emitter coupled pairs are almost always driven by purely differential signals, which is why I'm using a large signal notation for the common mode at the input here. Um, the two single ended inputs are referred to as the positive and negative inputs, or the plus and minus inputs. Um, and I've gone with plus and minus here, which is why we have the subscript P and M. The single ended outputs are called the plus and minus output. Um, which uh, makes sense. Uh, and I've indicated the plus output is on the same branch as the minus input. Um, we could actually flip that around and call this the plus output if we wanted to. Um, which side you call plus versus minus is an engineering choice. Um, and we'll see soon that swapping the values of uh, the locations of VOP and VOM uh, just changes the sign of the gain of the amplifier. Um, so you could swap what you call these outputs without changing how the amplifier functions. We start the large signal analysis by writing a KVL loop from uh, one input across the tail node to the other input. That gives us VIP minus VBEP plus VBEN is equal to VIM. Rearranging a bit, we get VIP minus VIM here, plus VBEP, VBEM minus uh, VBEP. And we know from our uh, work with references that we can re represent these VBE values with the inverse of the diode of the BJT equation. Um, so represent them as a natural log of IC over IS for each transistor uh, multiplied by phi t. Combining the logs and assuming the IS of the transistor values of the transistors match uh, gives us this natural log on the right side of the equation. And combining VIP and VIM into VDM, uh, since that's the differential mode input, gives us uh, VDM on the left side of the equation. And we've just divided phi H from one side to the other. Exponentiating the expression gets us to a relationship that I find evocative. The ratio of current in the P branch to the M branch is an exponential function of VDM over phi th. That means that increasing the differential mode rapidly causes ICP to get bigger than ICM, and decreasing it does the opposite. However, IP and IM have to add up to I tail, uh, so there's only a finite amount of current in this structure. And if you combine this constraint with this equation, um, you'll find out that uh, ICP and ICM could each individually be represented by a hyperbolic tangent function of VDM over phi th. Uh, plotting that out looks like this. Um, when VDM is very positive or very negative, so over here or over here, 
then iTail is still steered fully to the ICM branch or to the ICP branch. However, when VDM is close to zero, then we see uh, this sort of exponential shaped shift of current from one branch to the other. When VDM is zero, iTail splits evenly between the P and M branches. Uh, hyperbolic tangent is generally a pretty slow function, but the argument is VDM over phi th, and phi th is quite small. So that means the uh, emitted coupled pairs have um, very small differential input ranges. If VDM reaches plus 3 phi th, then 96% of the current is going to be in the ICP branch and only 4% in the ICM branch. Um, similarly with minus 3 phi th. So there's only 75 millivolts of difference from perfectly balanced to current being steered fully one way. The narrow input range of emitter coupled pairs is annoying, but degeneration can increase it. So I've drawn a uh, emitter coupled pair with additional emitter degeneration here. We analyze the circuit in the same way, making a KVL loop from an input uh, through VBEP across a resistor, back up a resistor across VBEN to VIM. And we rearrange it the same way to find a dependence on VDM uh, here and a uh, dependence on the natural log of the current in the two branches. Rearranging a little further, we realize that this equation is transcendental. Like there's a log and a linear term, um, it's hard to solve. However, we could still graph that equation numerically. Um, and we'd find that it, it creates just a much wider transition region where the current is steered between I the M branch and the P branch. Um, and basically linearly, it's uh, stretched out as a pretty straight line in this middle region. Um, the main takeaway from that is that we have increased our input range to I tail times RE when we do this. So in summary, emitter coupled pairs are only sensitive to differential signals. Differential voltages steer the tail current from one side of emitter coupled pair to the other as indicated in this graph. Um, the input range of an emitter coupled, and by this equation. The input range of an emitter coupled pair is plus or minus 3 phi th, and the input range of a degenerated emitter coupled pair is plus or minus i tail re.